All right, our intrepid reporter, Hercules Gomez, there with the hard hitting questions to mm. Christian Pulisic. The big headline there, Greg, he, was, he has the intention of winning the World Cup. You hear that from Christian. What does it make you think as a manager? I like it, first of all. Um, second of all, we got two tournaments that we're playing. One's a group stage tournament and one's a knockout tournament. Mm. But to get to the knockout, you have to go through the group stage. So that's the way we're dividing it up. And if you do get to the knockout, anything can happen in any given game. So for us, you know, I love when I hear my players saying that they want to go out and try to win the World Cup. What are your expectations for this World Cup? And what I mean by that is, where's the line between failure and success for the U.S. men's national team? So I think it's exactly that. Um, we want to get through the group. We know we have a difficult group um, with Wales, England, and Iran. It's a challenging group. But, you know, the whole focus of this first part of the tournament is how do you get through the group stage? Two teams go through, so that's going to be our focus. How do we get through? And then next, you get to play in the knockout tournament where, as I said, anything can happen. It's on that day, do you play your best game? And if we play our best game and we lose, we can live with it. So it sounds like you're hyper-focused, obviously, on 2022. But you got a young team, so let's think a little bit about 2026. First, do you want this job for another four years? And do you feel like in Qatar you're kind of coaching for that next opportunity? What I'd say is that um, I've really enjoyed working with this group. It's been really nice seeing this group develop, seeing the personalities develop in this group, and also the level of the team. You know, when I think about 2019 to now where the team is, um, we've made a lot of strides. So, you know, that's something that I'll sit down with my family and we'll talk about and we'll evaluate. Um, but one thing I'd say is it's a great opportunity to be coaching the, the United States in the World Cup um, in 2026 at home is, is, is a huge opportunity. Seb got a little ahead of ourselves right now talking about the 2026 <laughs> World Cup. Let, let's go back for a second to first time. <laughs> this World Cup, to, to Qatar, and it's yeah. specifically England. It's a very important match. I'm sure a lot of fans have that circled in their calendar. How will you go about that match? Are there, are there, is there a key game plan? Are there players you've already kind of notched that you need to concentrate on? You know, we've been studying their games already. Um, we watched four or five of their games. And, um, you know, you could, they're vulnerable in some ways, but they're a billion-dollar squad. Hmm. Right? If you add up the quality in their team, it's over a billion dollars. So we know it's going to be a difficult game. And for us, it's finding their weaknesses and exploiting their weaknesses because we have, you know, we're a difficult team to play against. And if we can take advantage of some of the things they don't do well, we'll have a chance in that game. Greg, when you say you're a difficult team to play against, give me an example of what makes you guys difficult. We don't give up a lot of goals, firstly. Secondly, we press. We press relentlessly. We don't stop pressing. Mm -hmm. And it just breaks teams' rhythms, right? They will get some chances against us, right, if they break the press, but it's not easy. And we keep coming, and we have guys with good mentalities, and they'll keep pressing and keep going. And that makes the game a difficult game to be in. Is your game plan done for England? Is it done for the group phase, or is that something that you're kind of working on day to day, week to week, as we build up to the World Cup? Yeah, I think we're building into it. I know we're building into it. You know, these, we use these last, you know, since the, the June 15th when we were out of camp, we use this time period to just start scouting these guys and really get familiar with the, both the individuals and the, the team tactics of, of what they're doing. Um, we watched, you know, five or six of their last games. They'll still play a couple games leading up to the World Cup. We'll be looking at those intensely and, um, and just getting the game plan right to be, able, to be successful on the field. What kind of England are you expecting? Because we saw in England at the Euros as very different than what we're seeing right now, currently. Yeah. And listen, the, you know, let's give England credit because in the last World Cup, they, they came in fourth place, right? And in the last Euros, they came in second place. Mm. It's a team that played well, that, you know, placed well in the last two major tournaments. So they're, they're one of the favorites of the World Cup. It's going to be an extremely difficult game. But what we've seen lately is some uncertainty with their squad. And, and that's what we have to take advantage of. They're a well-coached team. You know, they were missing some players in that last game. If they have, if they have their full-strength team, they're a handful. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to be smart. We're going to have to manage the game. But we're going to have to be aggressive as well. Uh, speaking of England, there's like a little trail of Americans going into the Premier League. Almost like week by week, we get some breaking news there. We got some news today. Looks like Chris Richards could be making the move to Crystal Palace. Memory serves you're the first Crystal Palace player to ever play in a World Cup, right? That's right. I'd love to see Chris go there. Is that true? I'd love to see that. Yeah, what do you think of the uh, potential move there to the Premier League? Well, I mean, listen, it, it's first of all, Crystal Palace is a great club, mm -hmm. great stadium, <laughs> great fans. Patrick Vieira is a great coach. You know, Chris playing in the Premier League, yeah, I think you know, I like it from every single side. Mm. What about Leeds with all the Americans going yeah. there? You must love that. I do. Um, you know, anxiously awaiting, um, you know, Jesse in his second season, but then 
Brendan, uh, how he's going to adapt to the Premier League from the Austrian Bundesliga is not an easy um, adaptation. And then Tyler going from the Bundesliga to the Premier League, excited mm. to see what he can do. Let me play devil's advocate for a second. Um, You're not going to play devil's yeah. advocate. Yeah. <laughs> he plays the devil. He plays yeah. the devil himself. <laughs> what if it doesn't go well for Leeds? Does the narrative of Ted Lasso, the Americans, he leaned on the Americans, Brendan Aronson, Tyler Adams, does that worry you a bit? You know, You've been a manager in Europe. You've been yeah. the American you know manager like. in Europe. Yeah. 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 Well, what I'd say is that uh, it's just a story. It's just a narrative. Mm. It's not real. Um, when a Spanish coach fails, does it mean that we don't go to Spanish coaches anymore? If an Italian coach doesn't, doesn't do well, well... with all due respect, the, the amount of Spanish coaches around the world are significantly higher than American coaches. No, absolutely. But I, what I'm saying is I don't think you judge, you know, one person's body of work. I don't right. think you judge the rest of the field. And Jesse's a, a great coach, regardless of if it works or, or, or doesn't work there, he's still a good coach. Yeah. It's just the circumstances. The, can he get the team to do exactly what, they, what he wants? You know, does he, do they invest in the squad? Do they bring the right players in? You know, it's, it's always a combination of things. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.